So distortion. Distortion is a tool you have available to make bass lines sound thicker and heavier. So naturally, it's something you want to use quite a lot in electro where you tend to want a thick, heavy bass line. And how it works is it adds in additional frequencies, additional harmonics is the technical term related to what's currently there. So the way to look at it is you're adding in extra information, extra frequencies, but because those frequencies are related to what's currently there, the whole thing sounds thicker and heavier but in a musical way because those extra frequencies are related to the existing information. That's the idea at least, that's how you use distortion. Now let me give you some examples and an important thing to pay attention to whenever you apply distortion. So in this example here, I'm actually doing the distortion inside of Serum and to be more specific, I'm doing the distortion in the drive bit drive down here in the filter module just because it's a nicer sounding distortion than using distortion as a separate effect in Serum. It tends to emulate tube distortion from memory. I remember running some tests on it a while ago, but yeah, basically I'm doing the distortion inside of the filter module with this drive control. And notice what happens as I turn up the drive, there's an important thing you need to pay attention to. See how much better it sounds with that drive control turned up? But there's an important thing to factor in here, and that is the overall level of the sound has increased too. So there's a chance that I'm fooling myself into thinking it sounds better when all I'm actually doing is turning it up. And this is something you always need to be listening out for whenever you do any processing ever in music production. So that's EQ, compression, distortion, anything like that. You need to make sure that when you adjust a control and it sounds better, it sounds better because of the processing you've done and not just because the overall level has increased. Let me show you what I mean. So before I apply this drive, the level of the channel goes to minus 26 and a half. Whereas with the drive, at 80%, which is where I ended up liking it, minus nine and a half. And so if I do my mathematics correctly, and hopefully I should do, I have a maths degree after all, that's a 17 dB difference in level as I turn up the drive control. And that's absolutely huge. So much so that it's going to be hard to tell what difference the distortion is having on the overall sound. So a nice little trick I like to do in this situation, remember you can do this with EQ and compression as well, is to apply a utility or a gain adjustment at the same time. So right down here, I have a utility with 17 dB of gain increase. So I can compare with no distortion with a 17 dB increase and then with distortion with no gain increase. Check it out. And with the distortion, Do you see what I mean? When you adjust the gain at the same time, you can actually focus on what the distortion is doing independently of gain. You always have to factor in gain whenever you do any processing. And in this example here, the distortion isn't doing an awful lot. It's just doing a little bit of thickening up, a little bit of flattening of the dynamics, but nothing too crazy. Certainly nothing like you first heard it when I turned up the drive. When I first turned up the drive, you probably thought, wow, that sounds so much better. That's amazing. That's completely revolutionized the sound. When in reality, Reality, all I was doing was turning it up and doing a little bit of gentle distortion. It wasn't anything too crazy. And this sound also demonstrates a second important principle, and that is while distortion is an incredibly powerful tool to create thick, heavy basses, you don't necessarily need it. Even before the distortion, this bass sounds nice and heavy. And that's purely because it started off as a thick, heavy bass. If you start off with the right wavetables or maybe synthesize an FM bass in the right kind of way, you simply don't need to do any distortion because the bass is already thick and heavy. Just like compression, just like EQ, you don't need to use these tools if your sound is already doing what it needs to be doing. So as I say, in this particular track, the distortion isn't that necessary. It's just a bit of extra thickening up, a bit of extra something, nothing too wild. But in some situations, you do need to thicken up the bass in a dramatic way and distortion is the tool you use to do it.